When they tell us they're bailing out the banks or stimulating this so-called economy, what they're saying is they aren't going to fix the problem. Only an economy which impedes our natural will and capacity to render resources into production would ever require either pretended reparation. In fact, then, even theoretically, a so-called stimulus program is an evasion of solution with the only available and possible purpose being to perpetuate the system of exploitation. Most of us should be able now to anticipate the upper and lower bounds of the possible success of any prospective stimulus. But let's let our model determine the important ones explicitly. We will first walk through the terminal phase of a system from year 23 at 5% overall interest to see that without stimulus, it reaches utter failure at year 26. So this is the inherent lifespan of this system under the prescribed conditions. Now let's return to year 23 and apply a proposed stimulus of 20 units of circulation. According to present propositions, we borrow this into circulation without even any veritable way of securing it. Notice, however, that both the circulation and debt are increased 20 units. Now let's let our model calculate the maximum practical lifespan according to the resultant conditions, seeing that the stimulus might extend the lifespan from 26 to 29 years if, in fact, the logic of the stimulus holds without fault. In engineering, the integrity of any design is only as good as its weakest or least sound part. An obvious critical potential fault of this so-called stimulus scheme is that no matter what, it can only work temporarily and to some terribly limited degree because the faults of the underlying system will devour the so-called stimulus still failing the system. The only way to avoid utter failure and to provide justice to the subjects of the system is to rectify the faults of the system itself. A further critical fault of this superficial idea of a stimulus program, however, is that it can only succeed to this futile degree for the subjects of the system if all of them are promoted equally against the escalating costs of artificial indebtedness. For this hope to hold, every cent of the stimulus would have to be given to the subjects, who in fact the government is proposing loan the stimulus, largely instead to be distributed to the very perpetrators of this crime against the people. A further critical fault of this unqualified scheme is that the creditworthiness of the subjects has already been destroyed by the system or they would not require a stimulus. They therefore cannot borrow further because they cannot afford to service further debt. Such a further debt load would break them all the sooner. So let's run these numbers again, this time asking the people to service the debt the so-called stimulus is saddling them with. As we would expect, the increased sum of debt imposes utter failure all the sooner. We cannot borrow our way out of terminal artificial indebtedness. Instead of collapsing at the inherent point of failure in year 26, the purported stimulus has caused failure in year 25. The actual burdens of its greater debt have only shortened the finite lifespan of the system, and all this is only for the sake of the perpetrators, who of course are behind it. This is a highly political affair. And so we must recognize that any purported success of this unqualified proposition will be claimed falsely. The funding is not only taken from the people, it is taken from money they do not have. The people's successors will not even be able to pay interest on this hideous pretended debt. And so only the most irresponsible generations will think to leave these preposterous consequences to their own progeny. Even the temporary facade of success can only be claimed for that short while by the cheap trick of artificially delaying the people's payment, 
or the full ramifications of the faulted plan. Which is to say, of course, that the stimulus will not succeed at all. Given its natural course, its only capacity is to expedite failure.